Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hello, hello, Calvary. I'm Pastor Sean, and I have your word for the day. We're going to be in Matthew uh, for the next few months, and so if you have your Bibles, you can actually turn there and read along with us, and I invite you to follow with. Um, Today's passage, Matthew 2, 1 through 12. Right after we're introduced to the birth of Jesus, we're then introduced to some characters called the Magi, or wise men. Uh, We don't know the history of these Magi. In fact, we don't even know how many there were, but here's what we do know about them uh, from this very short passage. They were called wise men. Uh, There is only one way to become wise according to biblical standards. That is to know and to fear the Lord our God. They also follow Jewish prophecy. That's why they were looking for the star in the first place, the star that was pointing in the east towards Bethlehem, where the Messiah was to be born, where Jesus was born. And what these men discovered, they discovered Jesus, disturbed the culture around them. The, uh, The Jewish king at the time, Herod, was so awash with their discovery of the coming Messiah. Uh, He readily lied to the wise men. And in fact, he tried to trick them because what he actually wanted to do was to kill this so-called Messiah. Herod knew that if this newborn was the true king, he would be kicked from his throne and everything would change. Luckily though, the Magi feared the Lord enough to listen. And instead of listening to man, they listened to God. Because not only did they continue to pursue Jesus and praise Jesus when they, when they did find him, but after they found him, after they found Jesus, God told the wise men to go a different way home as to not encounter that bloodthirsty king again. So here are some thoughts from this passage that I think apply to each and every one of us as we encounter Jesus and look for Jesus as the Magi did in Matthew 2. Number one, our, our discovery of Jesus may disrupt the world around you. As you become a follower of Jesus, people start to notice because you yourself change. Some people are like Herod's and they don't like that change. They don't like what Jesus coming into your life means. And some are like other wise men who may join you in your pursuit of Christ. And then when you continue on your path of life, you will never take the same path as you have before. Just like the wise men, maybe you can't stray the same way you always have because God is leading you down that different road, maybe for safety reasons, maybe for other reasons. The last thought is from verses 10 through 11, and it says this. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When you encounter Jesus, the wisest thing that you can do is be overjoyed and worship him for who he is. The Magi brought three gifts to Jesus, but they didn't come asking for anything. And a lot of times our faith feels more like a genie lamp than a gesture of worship. So the understanding is the wise men gave to Jesus out of worship, out of knowledge of who Jesus is. They gave gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, a gift for royalty, incense, a gift for a deity, and myrrh, a gift for the burial of the dead. All three symbolizing, celebrating, and worshiping Jesus' character and his role in our lives. He is fully man and king, fully God and fully holy. And... He is our soon-to-be sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. All that the wise men did was worship towards God, and none of it had to do with what they could get from God, but rather what they could give to God. These, to me, were some of the wisest men in the Bible, and they were an amazing example of what it means to worship and pursue Christ. So what is our worship? I believe it looks like Romans 12, 1 through 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourselves, your bodies, as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In all things, we can pursue to be like wise men in this world. We can pursue the knowledge of the Lord, fear of the Lord, and proper worship as Romans 12, 1 through 2 lays out. I hope the story of the wise men seeking Jesus can bless you today. Have a great day, Calvary. Be blessed.